So the next part I'm going to call to the stage, he goes by the name of Lamar Anthony Hill. Put your hands together for Lamar Anthony Hill. Hey, how's on? It's a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. I'm staying, I'm from Jersey, not born and raised. I live in Baltimore. I was standing on a corner and the uh, cops pulled up. He's like, You live around here? I was like, No, I'm doing a poetry show. And he's like, You don't look like a poet. So I had to ask what does a poet look like? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> monogamy is cool. It's monotony that sucks. So every night I take home the same woman, but every night we switch it up. Some nights she's my good girl, other nights she's my slut. Some nights we make love, other nights we stray. Yeah. I'm sorry, I thought I was in Queens. Maybe I had a dad. <laughs> Let's try it again. Monogamy is cool. It's monotony that sucks. So nowadays, every night I take home the same woman, but every night we switch it up. Some nights she's my good girl, other nights she's my slut. Some nights we make love, other nights we stray. <laughs> Some nights she likes it smooth, other nights she likes it and who better to lick her clitoris like licorice? Bend her over the dresser and bless her. Bend her back out till she taps out. Hair full of hair in one hand, hip in the other. Now I gotta write what I want her. There's no place for her to run to her. She just got to accept the gift I'm giving her. I'm giving her the miraculous. So her vibrator is inadequate. Then I throw her ass on the mattress. Make her scream, make her cream. I could go for hours, I'm a machine. And I'ma make you a believer. You about to break the Guinness Book of World Records for the most orgasms I've ever had in one second. She likes it. She likes it rough. Wants to know if I can keep up. I tell her it's not in your best interest to talk shit. Cause I'm so thick, I hit all four sides like wall-to-wall -wall carpet. And, and, and if you want to hear the rest of that poem, you can find me. <laughs> I came to say three words to you, and since we haven't spoke in over 20 years, I figure it's past due. See, for every bad thing I've ever done in my life, I always had the perfect excuse. Daddy was never there. I was never in his plans. So I acted like a boy, because no one ever taught me to be a man. And all my relationships with women have been severely damaged, because although I love my mother, I still subconsciously blame her for your absence. Wasn't until after she died from cancer, and I never got a call, that I finally realized none of this was her fault. She did the best she could with what she had. But can't no woman turn no boy into a man? Can't no woman make him understand? Understand where his pain comes from, why his heart is so numb, why he finds it so hard to trust, so hard to love. Cause if daddy don't love you, it's hard to love somebody else. Shit, if daddy don't love you, it's hard to love yourself. And it's an endless line of stories just like mine. Angry men, scorned women, confused children, all innocent, all beautiful, all trying to get themselves back to neutral, all putting themselves through hell because of their daddy's issues. There has to be a reason. When we make love, she calls me daddy, and I love it when she does. She is looking for a father's Love. I'm looking to be for her what my father never was. Problem is, since we never got what we needed, we don't know what we want. We are both lost. Cause if you show me a woman who never loves her dad, I will show you a woman who finds it hard to trust a man. And if you show me a man who never loved his father, I will show you a man who has kneeled at the altar of at least a thousand women with which he never should have bothered. Last time we talked, we argued. I told you to fuck off. You told me to get lost. I told you I've been lost since the day you took off. Don't you dare blame me for the pain that you gave me. It was your mother, your mother who told me you were a track star at school. But the day my mother told you she was pregnant was the fastest she ever saw your black ass move. And the irony is, the irony 
is, I look just like you. I got a bad temper and a quick wit just like you. They even tell me I write poems just like you. I wonder if you write pieces like this too. Pieces I never read, cause we are both in too many pieces to ever speak. But I've made the conscious decision to be whole. A whole man with a whole soul and a whole heart capable of receiving love and whole parts in real time. I decide to release you of your demons and simultaneously let go of mine. We are free together. Might have taken 35 years, but better late than never. I decide to let go of this pain forever. Pain that was keeping me alive, tearing apart my insides. Why don't daddy love you? What difference does it make? We've all still got this life journey to navigate. Why wasn't daddy there? Why didn't he raise me properly? No longer will these questions stop me. I just pray that my God adopts me, keeps me on my path, forgives me of my past. Finally, this North New Jersey bastard has mastered how to preach what I practice. So I walk out of eyes with a smile on my face, because I finally realized I never needed the wizard in the first place. I was already smart, already had a heart, I was already brave. So no matter what you say, and a damn thing gon' change, I came to say three words to you. I forgive you. Daddy, I forgive you. Challenge, Cause your life expectancy is lower than your car's miles per gallon but I'm, a, but I'm a hybrid, plugged directly into where God lives I suggest you find yourself an outlet and plug in I suggest you find yourself an outlet before the pressure builds Pressure from your job, pressure from your kids, pressure from your bills It's when the pressure builds, the pressure kills My blood pressure is 180 over heaven's gates If you watch long enough, you might see me levitate My poetry is actually elevated to a place where you might not be able to relate. It gets less oohs and ahs, more crowds looking at me odd. But what exactly is the poet's job? Is it to write for the here and now or the hereafter? Is it to write for laughter and applause? Is it to write to get you closer to your God? Or is it to write something that's going to impress your squad? We believe the latter here. So we pay close attention to what matters here. We pay close attention to the words that we put in the stratosphere. We have resolved to do whatever it takes, understanding that to cast light, you must write from a dark place, and it gets no darker than this. I'm a guilty man, but my pen's innocent, so in a sense, I'm a hypocrite. But what poet isn't? We would all love to be what we write every night, but that's simply not realistic. Not as long as we are slaves to this flesh, understanding that what the flesh wants, the flesh gets. This life is a baptism by fire, and I'm doused in gasoline with God holding a lighter. Unfortunately, poets don't get the blow up. We just get to show up, speak the mouth, speak the message from the mountaintop like Jesus, hoping that the promoter gathered the people like Peter. We trying to save ourselves from ourselves. We animals called Peter, underpaid like teachers, so we can't turn down the features. Even if we show up at the airport, there's no one there to greet us. Show up at the venue, there's no one there to see us because too many false prophets show up before us, promised the people healing. All they gave was more torture. Said it was holy water that was wrapped. It was just tap in a genre where we don't always recognize real. Why don't you ask 13 how he feel? Knowing he got a message, but the people yelling recession. So like the rest of us, he's stressing. Not only for himself, but because his people missing a blessing. Poetry is not a profession. It's the pursuit of perfection. Whether live on stage or in studio session, we ask God for direction. Then try to spit something to give the people's minds an erection. And that's hard. Welcome to the Dirt Church. <laughs> Second service. CDs and DVDs are available for purchase. Thank y'all for listening. Yeah. Check, check. what the book is all about. This is actually my play. It's touring the country right now. It's called The Power of the Passing in the Pulpit. Uh, completely different from what a black editor is doing. It's uh, more in the vein of, you know, Richard Wright or Mary Baraka. So we're trying to do some, uh, trying to take the black theater back to what it used to be. So it's called The Power of the Passing in the Pulpit. Facebook, livebythepen.com, maranthonyhill.com, any of those places you can get it. I want to thank y'all for having me too, man. It's a great thank spot. You.